After monitoring the survey equipment day and night for several weeks, just before daybreak, the magnetometer alerts Ralph to a large magnetic anomaly. This target stands out different than all the other shipwrecks and targets found to date. At dawn, with the team assembled, they return to that location. You're on it right now. Well, there's something there, but I don't think it's what we want. They're three feet, one meter long. Yeah. Well, Ralph, if I understand this right, you've got a, a big magnetic target, like as if it was a big iron ship, but there's no, there's no physical structure there. Well, there's stuff on the bottom. I mean, yeah. you know, we've seen what, three or four parts to it. <clears throat> so what do you think? Should we dive it? Should we move on? Let's move on. You go down there and you pilot, find a pilot jump. What did you learn? You know? If that's the fa if that's the case, Clive, then let me let me say something because it's important. If we don't dive this wreck, we're discounting the mag. You don't have a ballast mount. There's nothing showing there. Just forget the wood. Take just eliminate the wood mm -hmm. and all the metal and all the ballast and all the anchors and all the guns and everything else. You're telling me it's flat. I'm saying I don't know. Yeah, well, I do. They're going to be flat. <laughs> if you really believe that then let's widen the search area and, and make the Klein 3000 do its job and cover some ground no, and pick things up that. on the They're mag later on. You're not following the game plan. You stick with it. Yeah, but... You don't, you don't deviate in the middle of it. You should, well, you you should, should finish it out and then take your targets and go back. You think it's wishful thinking? Yes. Yeah. Getting in the way of common sense. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time on these things. Super X make you crazy? I don't know. <laughs> Go dive, it, go dive on it. Go dive on it. All right, sir. If I'm wrong, you can say I told you so. If you're wrong, I'm going to say I told you so. I, I can only suggest on pistols on the foredeck at now. All right. Go, go dive. What could the sea hunters expect to find? Would Bunhar Richard look anything like a ship after lying two and a quarter centuries on the seafloor? One of the world's landmark marine archaeological recoveries involved Henry VIII's flagship, Mary Rose which was lost in the English Channel and became buried in a soft mud bottom. Mary Rose lay on the seabed for over 200 years longer than Bonham Richard. Yet remarkably, a large section of her wooden hull was recovered in the 1980s. Not only had large portions of the hull survived, archeologists and divers recovered thousands of wood and organic objects such as bows and arrows, navigational tools, and amazingly, even items of clothing. Using Mary Rose as an example, could we expect the same from Bonham Richard? The answer lies in the seabed's type and conditions. Mike and Warren had reported the seabed on their dives on potential Bonham Richard sites had been hard packed sand and rock. This in itself is not a good sign. The wood and other organic items of Mary Rose were preserved because they'd been buried in a soft silt and mud bottom. The smothering effect of this type of seabed creates an anoxic environment. In other words, an environment without oxygen. Take away the oxygen and you stop the process of decay and drastically reduce the number of wood and organic eating organisms. Remember too, the ship was lost out on an exposed part of the North Sea, a body of water notorious for the crushing storms that sweep across it. The only way to truly know how Bonham Richard has stood the test of time will be to find her wreck.